special presentation, the Hawkeye postgame press conference. What a season, folks. Thanks for joining us here for this Iowa's News Now Sports special chase for the championship coverage of Iowa's loss in the national title game to South Carolina. The Gamecocks now 38-0, 87-75 your final. What a game, what a season, what a run by Bluters Bunch. 24 years of the day she was hired in Iowa City. We take you to the locker room live now in Cleveland, Ohio. Sydney Falter, how great has she been? Well, listen in. <laughs> How long, how long do you think it'll take to really appreciate all this team accomplished? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, a long time, you know, you don't <laughs> realize it when you're in the moment. <laughs> You're going and going, and um, you know I think we've done amazing things this year, and um, I'm so proud of each and every girl. And you know this one is going to sting, but you know I'm proud of what this group did this year. What uh, what was the most difficult thing to defend against South Carolina? What was the biggest problem they presented out there for you today? I mean, their height. Like, it's hard to guard 6'7", um, you know, and we knew rebounding was going to be an issue. Um, you know, we, we tried our best um, boxing out and... Um, you know, I think we did play good defense, and I, I mean, the amount of points that they had on offensive rebounds obviously caused a problem, but, um, you know, they're a, a great team. Coach Peter King is a like a professional team, and I thought we um, played a full 40, and we gave it our all, but um, South Carolina is an amazing team. What was the atmosphere like for you? In some ways, it seemed like a Hawkeye home game out there. What was it like to be in the championship game and have that experience? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the way our fans travel and support us is so amazing, and um, we truly, truly appreciate it. And the love and support that they give us means everything. Um, you know, just running out to see a lot of black and gold on a neutral court is something so special, so we appreciate them. Can we look back a little bit right now just on these last six, seven months on what it's been like to play in front of sellout crowds pretty much every night going back to the crossover or getting just about? Yeah, I mean, like I said, our fans are so amazing. And, um, you know, it's it's crazy to think um, that we've played out in front of a sold crowd every game, even like away games. They Almost every away game, I think they sold out. So, you know, that just shows how, um, how special this team is and how everyone wanted to watch this team and what we've accomplished. So, you know, I'm grateful for our fans, and that's something that will stay with us forever. I don't know if we got a chance to speak to many of your teammates yet, but especially those three seniors, Gabby, Kate, and Caitlin, um, what, what might you say to them when you get a chance to All right, we're going to dip out of Sydney Falter Fault there again. How wonderful was she filling in for Molly Davis over the last few games? in postseason. Gabby Marshall, 166 games, most all-time as a Hawkeye. And the stat sheet shows she did a little bit of everything and has done everything for Iowa. Let's listen to her in the postgame. That's why we came out so hot. Um, just like some of us, it's our last game. Like, we're just going to give it our all. Um, I think, yeah, that was truly just a mentality going into the game. What do you think turned the game in South Carolina's favor? It was just huge inside. Um, I mean, they had... At halftime, it was 19 points points off of their rebounds, so that killed us. Um, but we I mean, we did all we could to box them out. Which, I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses, but like we just got some height on us. Uh, uh, but I, I mean, they did a great job of second, getting some ch chance points in the paint. So, what did you think of the atmosphere? It was it was amazing. They were loud. I could hear them. Um, Tons of Iowa fans, like always. I'm not surprised that they showed up for us. Um, yeah, those are the type of games that you want to be in. Um, close games till the final buzzer, and where it's just loud and the fans are into it. Do you know how many family and friends you had here? Yeah, exactly. a lot though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your final game, what was the bond like, and what is the bond between you and Coach Bluter and your fellow seniors who are here for the final time? Yeah, it's pretty strong just because we've been together for so long. Um, we've been through through it together, the ups and the downs, everything in between, and I think just having those moments on the court and off the court to just build the chemistry um, between the three of us and with Coach Bluter. 
Uh, we just, I mean, we've made history together. Like, we've done pretty much everything together for these last five years. And, I mean, I will have them in my, in my life forever. What was Lisa Bluter's message to you and the team just now? If she's gotten it to me, let's call that. Yeah. Gabby Marshall, 166 career games and a tough one to end, but what a legacy she leaves behind as a Hawkeye, the spark. And now we go to the sophomore sensation, Hannah Stolke, fantastic down the stretch for Iowa, really growing into herself. Let's listen into her post game after 11 points, three rebounds against the Gamecocks. Tremendous. Um, she's a great basketball player. Um, she's got height on me. She's got, she got a lot of O boards. And um, I think I learned a lot about playing in the post this year. <laughs> and uh, what did it feel like to get some of your own buckets and, and, uh, and really feel that crowd behind you in the national championship? What did it feel like? Um, I think it felt great. All right, we'll check back in with Anna in a little bit, but Caitlin Clark is on the podium the end of one of the most historic careers you will ever see in any sport. Let's listen in to 22's final presser as a Hawkeye. Can see you. Sorry. All right, Michael Robertson, hoopfeed.com. So, Caitlin, um, you've done a lot for the Big Ten. You know, Big Ten gets maligned a lot, but you guys did a lot for the Big Ten. I'm um, sure you're disappointed, but will you have a chance to look at the impact you've made where the ratings are through the roof and most of it's because of you? And then, of course, uh, the Iowa team, once again, being in this position two years in a row. So what will you look back at this time frame, despite the not winning the championship? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing is, you know, it's really hard to win these things. Um, I think I probably know that better than most people by now. And to be so close twice, it, it definitely hurts. But at the same time, like, you know, we were right there. We battled. Um, we took down some really great teams to get back to this point. It's something that's really hard to do. And. Um, you know, I think when I think about women's basketball going forward, you know, obviously it's just going to continue to grow, whether it's at the WNBA level, whether it's at the college level, like everybody sees it, everybody knows, everybody sees the viewership numbers. Um, when you're given an opportunity, women's sports just kind of thrives. And I think that's been the coolest part for me on this journey is just, you know, we start our season playing in front of 55,000 people in, in Kinnick Stadium. And now we're ending it probably playing in front of 15 million people or more on TV, um, you know, it just continues to get better and better and better. And um, that's never going to stop. You know, when you continue to give them the platform, like this, things like this are just going to continue to to happen. I want to stay to our right. Hi, Caitlin. Caroline Fitzgerald from Goals right Sorry. here. Hi. Um, what you and your team have accomplished in Iowa has made the whole world look at women's sports and women's basketball. How do you think all of women's sports can capitalize on this momentum right now? Oh, geez. I mean, I think the biggest thing is, I think for us, like, this team came along at a really good time, whether it was social media, whether it was NIL, whether it was um, our games being nationally televised. I mean, we've played on Fox, NBC, CBS, ESPN. I mean, you just go down the list, and we've been on every national television, you know, channel and I think that's been one of the biggest things that has helped us and I think no matter what sport it is um giving them give them the same opportunities believe in them the same invest in them the same um and things are really going to thrive I mean you see it um with other sports um and I'm a big fan of other sports like I try to support as much as I can and I think that's the biggest thing is you know continue to invest your time money and resources there and continue to show up for those people and give them the opportunities and um you know I think that's what's going to help drive women's sports forward in the future. We're going to go Scott to the back row and then back to Jim. So Scott, if you could raise your hand, we can get the microphone to you. Nope. Scott's in front of you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Scott Dockerman with The Athletic. This is for all three of you. Um, what do you think the legacy of this team and this era is for Iowa basketball? And what are the, what's probably the moment that stands out? Is it something on the floor? Is it something just between among all of you? Or, you know, I guess, what can you share? We're going to start with Kate, then do Caitlin, and we're going to hold on questions for coach. Yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know if you can really describe and put it into words, this legacy, but honestly, I mean, I just hope we've brought a lot of people joy um, and we've brought a lot of people together. Um, I hear all the time about how many friends that people have made in the stands just watching our games. We sold out every single home game this year at Carver. And then everywhere we go, you know, we have fans lining up wanting, you know, Caitlin's autograph, our autograph. But more than anything, you know, our legacy is 
you know, what we've brought to the state of Iowa, I think, and just all the joy and the fun. And, um, you know, it, it's pretty cool to be coached by coach Bluter and, uh, the culture she's built at Iowa. And I think just watching us, you can see the, the joy that we have. And so, um, I think that's the main thing for our legacy. Yeah, I would agree. I think this group has gone about it in the right way and every single thing that we've done and every, you know, phase of our life. And, um, I think that's what you can be the most proud of. I think, um, you know, we ch truly have each other's back. Maybe we weren't always the most skilled. Maybe we weren't always the tallest. Maybe we weren't always the fastest, but we just believed. We knew we could be in these moments. We trusted one another. Um, and that took, you know, a couple of years to get to that point. And, um, you know, there's been so many great Iowa women's basketball players that come before us and, you know, allow this program to be really, really good when, you know, Kate and I and everybody else stepped on campus and feel like we took it to a whole nother level and, um, I feel like our program is in really good hands moving forward. And um, I think more than anything, yeah, people will probably remember our, you know, two final fours and things like that, but people aren't going to remember every single win or every single loss. I think they're just going to, you know, remember the moments that they shared at one of our games or sh watching on TV or, um, you know, how excited their young daughter or son got about, you know, watching women's basketball. I think that's pretty cool. And that's, you know, those are the things that mean the most to me when people come up to me and, you know, I don't really get offended when people say I've never watched women's basketball before. I think, you know, one, you're a little late to the party. Yes. But two, uh, like, that's cool. Like, you know, we're changing the game. We're attracting more people to it. Um, but at the same time, like those are, those little things are just, you know, I think the moments that we'll remember for forever. We'll go to our back row. No, one more back behind you, Howard. Kenny wrote a WHBC radio. Caitlin, this was a game of runs. Your guys' start was amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But right before the half, they hit you with a 5-0, and then they start with a 6-0 in the third quarter. Is that where the game kind of changed uh, hands and they took control? Yeah, I think they're a, they're a really good team. So, like, we knew they were going to go on runs. And by no means, did when we started off as hot as we did, do we think we were going to be able to hold that lead? Like, that's just what good teams do. And um, I think – if I'm not mistaken, like there's some crazy statistic where South Carolina just outscores everybody in the second half by a bunch of points every single game. And to me, I'm just proud of our resiliency. You know, we go into the fourth quarter, I think we cut it to five and we just weren't able to come up with a few stops and come up with a few baskets. And um, that just speaks to our team. Like that's the story it's been all year long. My whole entire career is like, we never give up. Like we just keep fighting. And um, yeah, I mean, their, their runs were kind of daggers and especially when they're making pull-up jump shots. You know, that's what we're going to give up. Um, and, you know, sometimes you live with that and you're going to live with them out rebounding you. You know, there's only so much you can do for somebody who's six seven. Hannah was trying her best to box her out and she's a really good player, going to be a really great, great pro. So, um, yeah. I want to stay to our right, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Jim Trotter, the athletic ladies. Um, I want to ask a, vari a variation on questions that have been asked. Just we've talked about this being a transformative year in terms of women's college basketball and I just wondered, to, for the two of you personally, what does it mean to be a part of that and have your name associated with that? Yeah. Let's start with Kate. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I can fully grasp the whole entire concept of being a part of that right now. I think once I'm, you know, older and I can reflect back on this time, I think, you know, I'll appreciate it way more. But, I mean, just like we've said before, like seeing, you know, little – girls and little boys look up to us, want our autograph, enjoy watching women's basketball. That is just something so cool and so special. And, um, you know, I idolized Iowa women's, women's basketball, but it wasn't like it is now. And it is just super cool to be a part of that, um, you know, and I think forever will be known, like I said, our legacy as the team that's really kind of changed women's basketball in a sense. I mean, there's other teams too, but um, it's just really cool to be associated with that. And I feel super grateful. Yeah, I would say the same. I think there's, uh, you know, obviously so many amazing people that have come before us and give us this opportunity. And, um, I think, you know, to attract so many people to watching women's basketball is so special. And, you know, the way people have showed up consistently throughout my career, I was going through some old pictures last night and just like how things have changed since my freshman year and my sophomore year, like was so incredible. And, Time goes so fast. Like, it's crazy. I can't believe this is my last career game. And uh, there's just there's just so much to be proud of. Um, I think people didn't love us for our wins. I think they loved us for the way we carried ourselves every single day, for the way we played for one another, the joy we played with, the passion we played with, the competitive spirit we had, 
the way we high fived and celebrated our teammates' success, like that's the reasons people love turning on Iowa women's basketball. Take our last question from Lily up at the front. Lily. Hi, I'm DJ Lily Jade from 95.9 FM. And you've had an incredible journey to this point, especially with the historical viewership. What would you say to kids striving to be you right now? I'll start with Caitlin. I would say, I think the biggest thing is, you know, this is what I kind of set up my entire career is like, nobody really, really believed other than myself. I think confidence, I think as a young girl, like just have confidence, a young boy, have confidence in yourself and confidence in whatever you want to be. And um, I think that was the thing my parents instilled in me from a young age is like, they never told me no. Um, they told me no a lot about other things, but not in what I wanted to do um, and what I wanted to be and, you know, the goals I wanted to chase after. And I would say that's the biggest thing is, you know, you can say it, you got to work for it, you got to earn it. You don't ever want anything to be given to you. And I think that's what I'm most proud of throughout my career is like, I've worked really hard to be in this moment. Um, and that's where my confidence comes from. And I think that's the biggest piece of advice I'd give to the younger generation. Yeah, very well said. But I mean, I, I used to sleep with the Iowa women's basketball poster on my ceiling. So, you know, to be in this position and uh, to play for coach Bluter and to make it to back to back national championships. Um, I mean, I just feel super grateful. It's because I worked really hard and I dreamed big and, um, you know, I'm not, some all American five star recruit out of high school, you know, like I, I never was. And, uh, you know, people believed in me, I believed in myself and here I am. So if I can do it, so can you. Thank you very much, Kate and Caitlin and congratulations on a tremendous season. At this time, we'll open up the floor for questions from Coach. All right, questions for Lisa Bluter now after Start Caitlin Clark and Kate Martin uh, kind of poetically take their final question as Hawkeyes at the podium from a, a kid, a kid reporter there because that generation's got the baton now. What a what a career for both Caitlin Clark and Kate Martin. And what an anniversary for Lisa Bluter. 24 years ago today, hired at Iowa. She had a two-year-old daughter, was two weeks away from giving birth to a second, and uh, she has cultivated and created quite the culture and program in Iowa City since that day. Let's listen in to Coach Bluter there at the podium in Cleveland. Make this about just being one player as opposed to opportunity for the audience. And then just second one is if you could talk about the way Caitlin's uh, performance and time at Iowa uh, is going to impact how you recruit going forward. Um. Yeah, it's interesting that those games were streamed. I think we're playing at like three in the afternoon during COVID and things like that. So really not even giving anybody an opportunity to watch our games. But I mean, Caitlin has certainly been a tremendous star for our game, but there are so many stars in our game. I mean, we have many, many. And so we're just going to latch onto that next one next year. And and uh, I, I, there's lots of them. There's just not one. Even this year, there was so many. And that's what makes her getting the Player of the Year award so special because it wasn't a runaway. It was really, really hard decision because there are so many good players out there. Um, you know, I'm hoping that re with our success, I think success breeds success. And so definitely I, I feel like recruiting going up forward, we've opened up our geogra geographic uh, footprint. And uh, I think uh, that's going to bode well for Iowa in the future. I'm going to go to Nancy, then we'll go Talia and then Cam. Hey, Lisa, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, now that her career is over, can you put it into words what it means and what it's going to mean going forward for not just for, I mean, for her, for Iowa, for women's basketball, for all of it? I mean, she has, I mean, raised the excitement of our sport. There's no doubt. Just because she does things in a different way than anybody else can do. Um Plus, you know, she has all the intangible. She's a great student. She's a great role model. She does everything. You know, she she loves being that role model. Um, I, you know, I, I really think that, you know, when she came in as a freshman and she said, we're going to the Final Four, and a lot of people laughed at her and maybe even laughed at her for coming to Iowa, quite honestly. But she believed, we believed, and she got everybody else in that locker room to believe, and that is not an easy thing to do. Uh, so her just belief in everybody around her, it just grew and grew. Uh, and you could say the same thing about this year, quite honestly. Um, so 
I don't know if I answered your question completely, Nancy, but I think that she has done amazing things to grow our game and doing it the right way. We're going to go to our right, Talia. Hey, Coach. Talia Goodman with the next. Being here in back-to-back -back years, and especially with the expansion coming to the Big Ten next year, what's the importance and what does this mean for the Big Ten as a conference? Well, I hope it means a lot. You know, I, I'm so proud to be a part of the Big Ten conference. Um, it's a great conference. We go against super competition every single night. Uh, great coaches, great athletes, and it prepares us for this. It prepares us for being on the biggest stage. Um, but, you know, I really go back to quite a long time ago when the Big Ten said, we're going to put a network out there and we're going to be a national sports network. And I remember when Jim Delaney came into the women's catch coaches uh, room and I was like, what, you know, what is he talking about? And look at, look what happened. We were the first ones out there and then everybody had to follow suit to keep up. So I am very, very proud to be a part of the big 10. And I think our leadership is really, really good with Megan Khan right now too. Going to stay to our right, Cam. Cameron Teague with the athletic Lisa, everybody knows South Carolina is one of their biggest advantages, how deep they are mm -hmm. 37 bench points. It, like the first <laughs> quarter Bree went out and then they were to put Raven. How hard is that to game plan for so many different weapons and so many different looks they can throw for like Caitlin offensively. Yeah. And that was, I mean, a huge advantage because I think they played nine people in double figures. If I'm not correct, nine people in double figures. Um, we had six and yeah, just to have those extra fouls and those extra legs. I mean, they didn't have to play too hard. Even the other night, they were arresting people the other night. Um, one thing that we've always been able to do is really push the ball and really run. And, you know, we we did score, you know, pretty well. I mean, we scored 20 more points than other people do against South Carolina. So we did score pretty well. Um, but, yeah, P. Avil have all those fresh legs on Caitlin was really tough. And not only their depth, their height. Um, I mean, and not, I'm not just talking about their centers. They're, they're really pretty good, big at every position, which makes it hard. You know, I mean, they, were, they could recover really well uh, when we had threes. Going to go to our left, Jonathan. Thanks. Uh, Jonathan Tannenbaum from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Lisa, I'm going to ask you a similar question to what I asked Caitlin to know that Dawn praised Caitlin on the stage out there with all that Dawn means to women's basketball. What does that mean for you in terms of who Dawn is? And what does it mean to know that Caitlin is not done? She is going to continue to be a big deal and for hopefully many years to come now as a professional. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Dawn Staley is the leader of women's basketball right now. She's our Olympic coach. She is, I mean, the person that we are all looking up to. And she is, she's somebody that uh, when she says something like that to a player, um, you know, it should make them feel really good. So I'm thrilled that she acknowledged Caitlin and her greatness. I really am. Um, I think that Caitlin's going to continue to have this kind of impact in the WNBA with I mean, Indiana's doing well with her sick ticket sales. I know Las Vegas just had to move to a different, bigger arena uh, when Indiana comes to town. So those are all really good signs that, you know, women's basketball is in a good spot. I'm going to go right here to our front row and on the right. Hey, Coach Fluter, is, um, what a journey with this team. And I remember when you guys signed Caitlin Clark and no one really knew who she was at that point. Um, just thinking about what, you you guys have all taught her and and apparently like how to be a more compassionate person and how to be a leader. Um, but it's true that growth book goes both ways. You never maybe even had a group like this before. What has this group um, taught you or heck made or in what ways have they um, made you think differently? Um, well, people did know about her. She was the fourth best player coming out of the country. So, I mean, people did know about her, obviously. Um, you know, we really had to work hard to get her to keep her into state. But, you know, um, you know, this group, I really hope that I haven't changed a lot, to be quite honest. I mean, I've changed in how I had to coach Caitlin because there was that line you had to walk between discipline and don't put out the fire. And so there was that line. But honestly, I don't think I've changed as a person. I think you know, the values that I have now are the values that I've always had, the things that we really try to build as a team with trust and caring for each other. I mean, I've always tried to coach that way. We're going to go to our left. Robert Weber is Klubman.com. Congrats on a great season, Coach. Um, I want to ask you about Hannah Stolke. Uh, you know, 
very likely without her performance in the semifinals, you guys aren't here today. Um, can you just tell me how she's grown just this season and even in these last couple of weeks uh, against the really tough assignments uh, throughout the contest? Yeah, I mean, Hannah Stalky, first of all, was a power forward up until about beginning of November. So she really has adapted to her position. She didn't really want to be a center, but we convinced her that she needed that. If it was best for the team, she would do it. Um, she obviously has improved her game so much this year and used, you know, and, and everybody focused on she's not tall enough. She's not tall. You have other assets, right? You've got speed. You've got agility. Use those assets. Um, and, and she has done it. And even though she wasn't playing the position she really desired and wanted to play, didn't matter. She came and gave everything she had all day. And we've all, you know, talked about her growth as a young woman, as far as, you know, mentally and confidence wise. And, you know, that gives me a lot of joy when I see my women just growing in that area of their lives. Cause I know that's going to last forever. Going to shift to our right coach. All right, uh, Mike Robertson, uh, hoopfeed.com. So, Coach, um, maybe a consolation scenario, but you lost to Coach Mulkey last year, four titles for her, and then you lose to Staley this year, three titles for her. So what does that put you for the standard uh, that you may have reached, knowing that you did really well against these two coaches, but just came up a little short? Kind of makes me a double loser. All right, we have to dump out of uh, post-game coverage in Cleveland there because back here in eastern Iowa, there is severe weather. Chief Meteorologist Rebecca Kolfman clearly has been watching the same things yes. we have been with also <laughs> an eye on what's going on uh, up north of uh, the Cedar Rapids, Iowa City area right now. Yeah, we do right now have a tornado warning. We were kind of watching storms today.